Corey LaJoy in the nine car. How many of these waivers are we going to give out? And why I want to see Chase Elliott be Chase Elliott. Three, two, one. Hey there, race fans. How's it going? Todd Brown, That Racing Show. Thanks for dropping by for this pit stop segment. Corey LaJoy in the nine car. Now, how cool is this? Now, news is coming out that Gateway is sold out completely. Obviously, I mean, this has got to be some impact from Corey being in this nine car. I know a lot of people say that if uh, Chase isn't in the race, people don't watch. But I think maybe this week right here, a lot of people are going to be tuned in just to see what Corey does in this nine car. So that is a really cool scenario to see what happens. Because obviously, Josh Berry did really good in this car. And there's no doubt that Corey LaJoy has so much more knowledge and years in these cars. So it's going to be really, really interesting to see how this plays out. And if Corey can get a win. Now, one of the things I've seen on social media a lot here was people asking, what happens if Corey does win? And the simple fact is, if Corey wins, Corey is in the playoffs. And I think that is cool all in itself right there because you know once you get your first win that momentum builds up so it'd be cool to see what he could do in the seven car if he could get a win in that car i've said it earlier this year i could see it happening at atlanta in the seven car so who knows what the future is going to bring right here what doors this will possibly open for Corey. but uh yes he could get into the playoffs with a win this weekend now obviously the owner's points would go to the nine car it wouldn't transfer over to spire uh, motorsports but uh could be Corey's way into the championship hunt. And also with that, Carson Hosefar getting in the seven car. Great audition for him. So it's going to be really cool to see how all this plays out all weekend long. Now, one of the things that I want to talk about here that's really bugged me the last couple of days is this waivers. I mean, seriously, how many waivers are there going to be given out to people through the year? Now, I'm not picking on Chase or any driver. This goes for anybody out there. This is the way I see it. It should be limited at one. And it should be for a damn good reason to start with. Um, you know, I said back when Chase got injured that that, you know, it deserved a waiver at that point. Uh, but with this weekend, with taking somebody out deliberately like that um, and hooking somebody that uh, to me doesn't not deserve a waiver. Uh, and like I say, it's not it's nothing against Chase Elliott or anything like that. It's just simply I just don't think it deserves a second waiver through the year. Just have to face it. It's not your year this year. You pack up, you come back, you win races, and you move on to next year for a championship. But I don't think it's fair to do this and have drivers miss seven or eight races and come back and then do something like this and then get another waiver. When all these other drivers have had to be there, they've had to travel, they've had to be away from their families, they had to compete, they had to you know, do everything that they did in the heat and, and risk their you know, safety for all these weeks where another driver was able to sit home and all that driver's got to do is come back and win a race and boop right in there i don't like that i don't think it's cool i think it's something nascar should uh take a look at i actually did a poll last night to see what other people thought about it and as you can see here i think the uh the idea of this situation kind of is in the same minds of everybody but um going to be interesting to see if this keeps playing out i do believe if somebody's sick or things like that if it's something where you know it could implement uh dangerous positions for a driver to be in the car yeah that deserves a waiver but, uh, and maybe even possibly, eh, I ain't going to say possibly too. If you get sick twice during the year, yeah, you know, you just, you got to call it your year. That's just the only way I can say it. But my final thing I want to talk about today is, is Chase Elliott. And I want to see the real Chase Elliott. And what I'm saying is this guy right here, this guy who's confrontational, who, uh, you know, just showed his emotions and got everything out. Now, if you take a listen to this clip right here, you'll see that there were some words that Chase learned to live by. My mom always said, don't say nothing. You don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. So he's not even worth my time. Now, this is all cool. This is great. This is something I think everybody was taught during their childhood and up through their life. But uh, there's also this side of Chase, which happens on the radio. So all those words that were just spoken right there don't, uh, honestly, all the time play out. And I'm going to warn you, this does have some some vulgarity in it so if you're not into that you might want to turn off right now but let's take a listen to this hang on stupid motherfucker cool five he's a fucking idiot outside 
Another one outside here. I fucking broke again. Piece of shit, motherfucker. God damn it! It broke that right rear again. So. What the fuck is he doing, man? That was a dick move by him, for sure. It wasn't even fucking close. I mean, I'm like way, way outside. Next stop, hold your wheel, turn left. Now that was between him and Kyle Larson at Auto Club. Um, you know, that was some some pretty intense um, commentary right there from the driver to the crew. But what I'm saying is this is this is the driver I want to see because obviously there's such a passion and such a fire in him. And then when he gets out and does the interviews where he's just kind of stone-faced and you know he's pissed, but he won't say anything. Uh, you know, I think we're at the point now where obviously with the suspension of him this week, it doesn't matter if you say you intentionally wrecked somebody or you say you didn't. Um, Telemetry is going to tell the tale, and whatever happens after that is going to happen. But if you look at the interview here from Charlotte this weekend, you know, it was it was very just uh, somber, everything's okay type situation. Take a listen right here. Yeah, I, you know, the 11 ran us up in the fence there, and you know, once you tear the right sides off these things, it's kind of over. So just, uh, I hate it. I so for me personally, I want to see the mix of both. I want to see that uh, energy in those, in those interviews, whether it's something that he did to somebody else or something that was done to him. I just want to see the energy because I know he's got it in there, obviously, from that radio interview or radio commentary back and forth with the crew. But anyways, I hope everybody's having a great week. I appreciate you dropping by. If you've not subscribed to my channel, please do. I do this just purely for the love and fun of this and the talk racing with everybody. And uh, it's been a pretty interesting year so far, so we got so much more to talk about. But anyways, hope everybody's having a great week. And as always, see you to check the flag.